Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch You On. Thanks for logging on. Today, I've got something really special for you. In fact, I've got something special for me because reviewing a watch like this Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Skeleton Reference 15305 is a pure pleasure. 39 millimeters in stainless steel, this watch combines all that is good and great about the legendary Audemars Piguet Royal Oak with exquisite open worked movement and dial architecture that really threads the needle and splits the difference between the pure engineering and artisanal aspects of watchmaking. This watch has a lot of content, historical, artistic, and mechanical. If you love luxury watches, it doesn't get any better than this. Now, from 1972 to today, the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak has changed from a sort of iconoclast to an icon. Originally, the first fully integrated case and bracelet base metal sports watch to be priced at the true haute de gamme level. It caused a sensation when it was first shown in Basel in 1972. Designed by the legendary Gerald Genta, the octagonal bezel, the inset white gold bezel bolts, still present by the way in 18 karat white gold, the integration of the bracelet with the lugs, and the creation of an ultra high-end sports watch with a price to match in a base metal finished to a standard that is entirely haute de gamme, was revolutionary, and it caused a revolt at the time. The watch sold slow for the first few years before catching fire and becoming the legend and the industry immortal that it is today. Now, as of 2010, Audemars Piguet began to look for new ways to innovate with the watch. With the anniversary approaching in 2012, the company began to explore new options to keep the reference exciting and innovative. It was an icon, but it didn't want to become the the stodgy icon. It didn't want to become the establishment piece, thus the open work. Fully skeletonized caliber 3129 in-house manufacture movement. It's finished on its face up front with nothing obscured in the same sense, in the same standards that you would expect on the best of the Valet de Joux case backs from one of the holy trinity of Swiss fine watchmaking. Let's talk a little bit first about the aesthetic of the watch itself before diving deeper into the movement and the finishing techniques evident therein. Now I'm going to put it on the wrist and on the wrist it wears like a classical 39 millimeter stainless steel royal oak. Now it is the 39 millimeter, same as the jumbo. It's a little bit thicker but it's still only 9.4 millimeters thick. When I say the jumbo I mean the traditional Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, the, the very first gel Genta and in continuation to this day, there's still a series known as the Jumbo that represents that which hues closest to the original style and proportion guidelines of the original Royal Oak. So this one maintains that 39 millimeter case diameter, so proportionally it reads very similar. And from top to bottom, sapphire to sapphire, it's exceptionally thin. Being a sports watch that's less than 10 millimeters thick, still wears with tremendous elegance. Now all of the hallmarks are there. Contrasting finish is a major one. On my wrist, which is six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, it's very comfortable. The fact is, if you squint at it and just look at the silhouette, it's almost more like a cushion case. It is a product of the early 70s, after all. But the good thing about that is it distributes the mass very evenly, and it's completely flat. The bracelet tapers and conforms with incredible souplesse, so it's very comfortable. You can see the contrast of the bezel right there, brushed on the top, polished on its angled flank and then brushed again on its sheer bottom flank just before the expression of that that gasket that separates the case from the bezel itself revolutionary back in 72 you can see even the links even the shoulders of the links are faceted alternately polished and brushed and the intermediate plots that join the links together also feature polished and brushed facets the detail work is that exquisite just the case alone in stainless steel is worthy of a precious metal price tag because of the degree of time-consuming manual labor that goes into finishing it to this standard. Ask anyone who's a professional polisher or refinisher in the watch industry and they will tell you that Gerald Genta's Audemars Piguet Royal Oak with a full bracelet is one of the toughest watches to refinish to factory standards, which is why this is an outstanding example as it needs no refinishing and it features in impeccable condition. Now this watch also features another innovation that is quite, I would, I would say, thematically removed from the original tapisserie or waffle pattern dial of Gerald Genta's original. And therein lies the innovation of this watch. 
the reference 15305, and it is that open worked dial. There are two principal elements here, and I'm going to go over each of them working from the outside in. Now you can see that all of the indices on the chapter ring that's calibrated for the minutes and the hours, they're actually crafted from indices as well as a sort of a sort of printed calibration that portrays the minutes and then a full corporate marquee at 12 o'clock. Now the interesting thing about those indices is that in addition to being loomed, itself a little unusual on a dress style watch, and let's face it, anything with an open worked dial is going to have a little bit of that element, um, but they are designed to sort of mimic the bezel bolts themselves, and that's what I find to be the most intriguing part of that chapter ring. Its anthracite color is nicely consonant with the finishing of the bridges and plates of the movement, but it's the sort of parallelism between the bezel bolts and those indices at the hour markers that really strikes me, and that is what I find to be the highlight of that element of the dial. Now moving inward, you can see that Audemars Piguet's artisans have picked up where the engineers and the watchmakers proper have left off. The finishing is exquisite. Now, the dial side of a movement is generally known as the bottom to watchmakers, and it is exceptionally unusual to see the bottom of a movement in any case. It's even more exceptional to see it finished to this standard. The anglage on every edge, and whenever you skeletonize something, you create so many more bare edges and so much more work for those who work in the, uh, in the finishing disciplines, especially those whose job it is to polish these now spiderweb-like facets. There being so many of them and so fine with so many interior angles, it's amazing to think that even one can be produced to factory specifications without damaging it at some point en route. And yet this holds up under a loop. Everything from the skeletonized mainspring barrel to the skeletonized full balance bridge features exquisite, immaculate, and impeccable finishing. This is the best of Swiss luxury watchmaking handcraft. There's nothing to mar the view. The hands are spare, there is no date, and the dial is, is not just open worked, it's completely open. There is no cadran that's been cut out to reveal parts. Other than the Rehaut chapter ring with the indices, there's nothing but hands, which after all are kind of the point of a luxury watch. You still do need to tell time. But they blend in. Their expanse, their span is spare and obscures none of the view. You can see the escapement beating away at 26, uh, 21,600 vibrations per hour. This is an in-house movement and it has all of the modern technical refinements you would expect from Audemars Piguet. It has a fixed mobile stud holder, which means you get most of the advantages of a free-sprung movement. The index cannot move simply because it's displaced by shock. It is screwed into place. And a full balance bridge, you can see, anchored at two points, one on each side, provides additional rate stability and resistance to shock. It has a 60-hour power reserve, which is superior and far more than the industry standard 42 hours of autonomy without winding. And with respect to winding, it has a very refined bi-directional system, as well as a fully skeletonized 22 karat gold winding rotor. Now normally, the winding rotor on this caliber would be blazoned with the Audemars and Piguet family coat of arms, as the families continue to own an interest in and share the board of Audemars and Piguet. It is the oldest continuously family-run watchmaker in Switzerland, but here the rotor has actually been skeletonized with only an AP logo, allowing you to view the entire movement almost unobscured. Now talking about the winding again, it's bi-directional. Why would you want bi-directional if it's been proven that unidirectional is more efficient? Well, there's a very good reason for that. This being high-end watchmaking, true haute horlogerie, the bottom line is that bi-directional, because there's no unloaded winding direction, doesn't have the, what some people consider slightly unrefined feel of a rotor freewheeling in one direction. That, that Valju wobble that's well known on the 7750 just would be unbecoming of a watch of this caliber and this, re realistically, this positioning, this stationing within the market. So Audemars Piguet fits bi-directional winding and they reinforce its efficiency by using unlubricated ceramic ball bearings. The latest standard as also used by Vacheron Audemars, um, as also used by Patek Philippe, as used by Jeger Le Coult, they allow exceptional longevity. Over 1,500,000 revolutions have been tested in the lab with no noticeable wear. That removes the possibility of having to pay for a new winding system down the line, a frequent cause of failure and expensive service in automatic movements. So not only is it refined, but it's a low-maintenance system. 
highly efficient as well. It's the best of all possible worlds. Now, this movement, which contains 239 parts and 38 jewels, is entirely in-house by Audemars Piguet, but it is so much more. An in-house movement is one thing. A lot of companies now make those. A superb in-house movement is another. And many Audemars Piguets contain a variant of this superb 3120 movement. But the 3129, with all the features of finishing seen on the bottom of the movement, on the top of the movement through the rotor, it's like... It's, it's like a tangle, a jungle of mechanical fascination. This is what we love about mechanical watches, laid bare to the naked eye. Anyone who is inspired by art, inspired by science and engineering, can relate to this watch. This transcends the typical collector niche interest in mechanical watches. You can show this to anyone with any degree of appreciation for fine craftsmanship, and they can smile and enjoy this watch. And in that sense, I think this might be, despite its high price point and its positioning within the collector market, I think this might be the most broadly appealing, most accessible, most lovable mechanical timepiece I've seen in a long time. You can see this 100% complete Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Skeleton reference 15305 39mm in stainless steel with all factory packages, technical manuals, and documents of provenance on our website, Watch You Want.